Most people in America are familiar with what makes a life worth living and what makes a retirement worth having. Every human being at some point starts to acknowledge that their career is going to time out over time and that they may be losing their rights to do their career and they may just have to justify going off and working in what they might consider a lesser quality position. The arrogance of some people is assigning their right to say to someone, why don't you just go get a McDonald's job? Now, while there's nothing wrong at all with McDonald's Corporation, and it certainly employs a lot of people all over the world, in almost every country across the world, the reality is that the pay scale of that particular type of position may not be enough income to produce a life for someone out of poverty. And basically what you're saying is, I'm going to regulate you to poverty for the rest of your life, as opposed to raising you on the Lord's eagle's wings to become all you can be. You see, it's a matter of mentality. It's a matter of training in some cases. It's a matter of certification often, and it can be a matter of college classes. But in truth, it is a matter of seasoning and maturity and openly a matter of a person's rights to decide what they're going to do, what they're going to play for, and what they're going to stay for in life in order to make themselves a living. Because how they make their living and how long they make their living and what they do for a marvelous living not only creates their physical health based on whether or not they've got a sit-down job or a stand-up job and how that impacts them ergonomically, but it's also obviously from the beginning of our conversation today about what is and isn't going to produce the enough income to provide for them the three S's, which is shelter, sustenance, and any type of ancillary services they need to live their life. At the same time, what they're able to put away in the bank account, a savings account, a CD, an IRA, or a retirement fund for them to have actual retirement money so that when they're too old and too gray and too tired and unable to walk or move, they have money coming in beyond what could be coming in from the government today. You see, people don't always plan backwards when they start their career. And something I really encourage college students when they have the opportunity to do is to ask them to look at their retirement. What do they want their retirement to look like, feel like, smell like, and be like? And what kind of person do they want to live their elderly years with? And what kind of place do they want to live? What kind of money do they want to have? What kind of entertainment and food and all that do they want? And once they figure that out, they can work themselves back through a career plan, a career path that will take them down to where they're beginning right now. What steps do they need to take to get that first launch job that will lead to the second job and the third job and possibly the fourth job before they retire? And they'll have them for them based on income and salary and savings, what they need for retirement.